Today, I'm going to be going over some of my favorite Kevin King Amazon hacks and also some of my hacks that I haven't even shared before on this podcast. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Are you looking to learn how to sell on Amazon? The Freedom Ticket course made by Kevin King is one of the most popular courses ever created for Amazon sellers. It's got over 90 modules and 40 hours of detailed step-by-step -step training to help get you started on your entrepreneurial journey. Now this course costs $997, but Helium 10 actually covers that cost of the course for any Helium 10 member. Find out why tens of thousands of students love this program by going to h 10 dot me forward slash freedom ticket don't forget that if you do sign up for a helium 10 account don't pay full price use our podcast discount code ssp10 to save 10 percent off for life hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the series sellers podcast by helium 10 i'm your host bradley sutton and this is the show that's a completely bs free unscripted and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-com world and we are actually going to be doing some serious strategies today because recently uh, in case you missed it you know kevin king did a webinar where he gave his 51 top amazon hacks uh for this year and uh, a lot of them were, were real bangers uh, and we're gonna be going over not all of them but some of them uh that for those of you who might have missed it i'm gonna go over some of my favorite strategies as well some of which i haven't even talked about uh, too much on this podcast before so you know for those who don't know you know kevin king is kind of like the um you know the the guru to the gurus you know, we, we don't use that guru g word much anymore but you know he's basically kind of like the mentor to to a lot of you know very successful sellers out there and one of the kind of secrets to his success and what he's known for is his hacks or strategy you know when we say the word hacks it doesn't mean like this is you know black hat you know kind of stuff or um, or things that could get you in trouble on Amazon. You know, it, it's more like advanced, you know, think of that word hacks as like advanced strategies or serious strategies, just like this podcast uh, talks about. So uh, from his uh, webinar, we're going to, we're going to take out some excerpts from there. Uh, of some of my favorite ones, you know, we don't have time to go through all 51, but I'm going to bring out my top ones and also some of the ones that I think will really help. And I'll give you guys a, a preview uh, of a new tool that's coming out to Helium 10 that we talked about that, in itself is almost a hack to use because there's nothing out there like it that I know of. And it's going to give you a, a lot of um, insights into historical keyword data that you've never seen before. So really cool um, thing. I'm, I'm so you know happy that we're going to, we're going to release this something I've been trying to release for, for years at helium 10 quick note here, you know, for those watching on YouTube, uh, I've, uh, you know, we got world cup this year, so I'm actually wearing my helium 10, soccer uh jersey here in honor of the world cup if you guys are watching this on youtube let me know in the the comments who, who's your team uh in the world cup which country are you go uh are you going for who's going to take it all let me know anyways let's go ahead and get right into the first few hacks that uh, kevin has for us so as a lot of you know the united states or maybe you don't know the united states is the second largest spanish-speaking country in the world and actually, if you listen to the current AM PM podcast that just came out today, we actually talk about this with uh, someone who's who's a Spanish speaker. But there's 50 million Spanish speakers in the U.S. Only Mexico has more. That's more than Colombia. That's more than than Chile. That's more than Argentina, more than Spain. Uh, there's 50 million in the U.S. And a lot of them are using Spanish words to search on Amazon.com. And it's not just the ones that live in the U.S. It's also ones that maybe live in Central America, or there's people in South America that order on Amazon.com, and they have their orders shipped to like a Dropbox in Miami. There's like mail forwarding services that will forward their orders to them because they can't get this stuff off of Mercado Libre, or they can't get it in their country. And so there's a lot of them searching in Spanish, but how do you know what those keywords are? Uh, how And how can you quick, quick, quickly find them? What I like to do on all of my products is I take the top 20 competitors to my product. I load them up in Cerebro, you can do less, but you know, 20, I like to go up to 20 and load them up into Cerebro all together. You know how you post, paste them in all together. You see there on the lower left-hand corner, you can just keep pasting in uh, ASINs and I get 20 of them in there. And then that's going to spit back uh, the results, the Cerebro results all combined. And I'm going to export that as a CSV file. So I export that as a CSV file. And then I go over, I take that CSV file and I import it into Google Sheets. 
Google Sheets is free. If you have a Google account, it's basically a spreadsheet. It's like Excel, uh, but on Google, it's totally free. So I import that CSV that, that, I, that I downloaded into Google Sheets. And then what I do is I add two columns. So you're going to go in, you're going to insert two columns into this sheet on Google Sheets. It's under insert where it says columns there. You see the two arrows and you'll insert two different columns. And inside the first column, I'm going to put where it says on the left-hand side, equals detect language A2. You make sure that A2 is the column that has the keyword phrase in it. And, and what it's going to do is going to detect what language that phrase is in. And then the next, the next column, I'm going to add equals Google Translate, A2, so I know what the heck is this in, in, in English. And when you do that and you copy it all the way down, you're going to get a, a, a sheet <coughs> that's, that's, that has all that data all the way down. Then you can go in and you can filter by language. So ES is the abbreviation for Spanish. So if I want all the Spanish keywords, I have this massive list. Everything that's in Spanish, I can just filter by Spanish, and then boom, look at this. I got all the Spanish keywords all together in one place. You could do the same thing if you're selling in, for those of you selling in Europe, you know, if you're selling in uh, the UK, there might be people speaking, uh, searching for French keywords or, or German keywords in the UK marketplace. You can instantly find them all doing this exact same method in other marketplaces as well. And then what I do, what you see here is what you see this in the spreadsheet says keyword sales. That's the estimated sales per keyword. That's a Helium 10 Elite special thing from that, that uh, we have for Helium 10 Elite members where you get this exact uh, almost exact, it's pretty close to how many sales are they generating? Not what's the search volume, but how many sales per month they're generating. So you can then decide, hey, which one of these do I want to go after? And and I have the translation there. It's a really great way to get some low-lying fruit and add some extra sales. Hardly anybody is doing this. Only Helium 10 Elite members have even heard of this before. For the most part, it's a great way to pick up a, a lot of low-lying fruit, easy to keywords, don't really even have to do any PPC or anything to start getting sales off of these. And most people ignore it. So this is this is a cool little technique to use. You can turn any text into AI generated images. Any text. This could be a great way if you're trying to concept something. Or maybe it could even be a great way to actually create images for your listing or advertisements for you know Facebook or something like that without spending hardly any money at all or virtually no money right now because most of the stuff is in beta and it's free. Sometimes it produces some gobbledygook uh, uh, as an image, and but other times, if you if you get the right keywords in there, it can create some amazing stuff. It can be great for prototyping, for coming up with ideas if you're trying to express an idea to somebody. It's called MidJourney.com. There's a couple other ones out there, Dally and a few others, but this one I'm going to show you is MidJourney.com. If you go there right now, it's in beta. You sign up. It's free right now to sign up. You, you may have to wait a day or two to get uh, authorized to use it. But once you do that, you come in and you type in the text prompt. So you basically just describe what you want to create a picture of. So in this case, it's multiple bottles that each contain a different biome of Earth. You know, so that's kind of a, like a fantasy kind of thing. You type that in, you hit return. And it usually takes a couple minutes or so, depending on how complex the prompt is. And it will come back with an image that looks like this. It just created this exactly from what you typed in. You can do it with like this. Some things like the Anne character, an ethereal dark skin goddess of the moon with long purple and black dreaded hair. Type that in. This is what came back as an image. Pretty freaking cool. Um, another one, highly detailed transparent sculpture shaped like waves and jungle flowers. It's a museum exhibit. You know, just giving it concepts, just giving it ideas came back with this. You can use this for product ideas. You can use this for situational ideas, for cool graphics. Here's another one, a lightning baby dragon. With lightning sparks, intricate details, unreal engine, photo realism. That's what it came back with right there. You can get really, really cool. This stuff is like next level. Google has a video version of this that's in beta right now where you can actually create videos doing similar stuff to this. It's amazing. Um, this is going to get, start playing with this now because this is going to be the future. And you're going to be able to prototype, create images, do all kinds of amazing stuff, probably even upload I think it's going to get to the point fairly soon where you can upload a base image, like maybe a base image or maybe a picture you took with your iPhone, a, a piece of crap picture you took with your iPhone uh, of your product, and then do all kinds of cool stuff to it and put in all kinds of cool situations. It's going to, it's, it's, it's coming. Uh, so take a look at this stuff. This is another cool trick that I use on PPC is I like to steal traffic from new, from the new guys, new people that are launching products. They're, they're oftentimes they're running Google ads they're running ads to their list. They're doing Facebook, who knows what, 
uh, they're doing. Um, but their products have no reviews yet in the most cases. So and the, the, a lot of people still don't trust it. But what I like to do is I like to steal their traffic. I like to steal their promotions and like to get on their listings and just steal all, steal everything from them. I'll uh, piggyback on their hard work uh, for free. Oh, well, well, almost for free. So like I said, most new launches have very few reviews. They're running campaigns to drive traffic. So what I do is I use X-Ray to find these guys. I want to know who's launched recently and who I who's, who's maybe out there running a lot of promotions. And then I use PPC product targeting to try to steal their traffic. So like, for example, I go on X-Ray, you know, where it says creation date. And that tells me I can look and say, who's created something within the last couple of months uh, of me uh, of right now. And you can sort filter it by this. And then I go and I copy those ASINs and put them into a PPC product targeting campaign and target my product to their page. My product has, you know, 50, 100 reviews. Theirs has zero. It's instantly someone comes to the, look at their product like, ah, oh, um, why should I buy this one when this other one down here is, looks better and has 100 reviews um, and you steal their traffic. It's a, it's a really cool little technique. I, I love this, you know, uh, strategy that, that Kevin talked about, you know, trying to, you know, advertise on the newer listings. So, uh, you know, he mentioned about how to, you know, look it up in X-Ray you know, who has the uh, newer listings, like, let's say you're not even on Amazon, though, another way that you could use this strategy that Kevin just talked about is going to black box products, all right, and then use the filter um, that has title keywords, and also listing age. So for example, if you're selling collagen peptides, I might have put collagen peptides in the title, something that I think uh, is a keyword that most top players are going to have in the title. In this case, I did title keywords, coffin shelf, and I put listing age maximum five months. Now I could, you know, put BSR filters or, or sales filters or anything, but, but I just did this raw, um, search right now. And I came out with 10 items of, of products that were released in the last five months. And you'll notice, you know, some of these are not doing much sales at all, you know, like five, you know, 19, but then, you know, here, here's a, a newer makeup coffin shelf that, you know, is doing pretty good sales. So they're, they're getting a lot of impressions a month and they only, um, they've only been around a, a couple of months, they only have 40 reviews. And here's some others that are in that same boat. So this, uh, you know, strategy by, by Kevin is great to use, uh, in order to try and target these newer ones that maybe your listing is better. Um, but, you know, use what he talked about by going into x-ray and, and looking at actual search results. But you can also get that right there in black box products and, and search in different niches where you think, um, you know, there, there might be sellers who or products that you know you're more attractive uh, than on, you know, since you have a more mature listing uh, you know, with more reviews. And then that's a great way to get product targeting as well. Let's go ahead and go right back into the hacks. Create marketing customer service videos with AI in multiple languages. This is a great thing to do for customer service. It's a great thing to do if you're answering your questions on Amazon. You know, the, the question and answer, you can upload video into the question and answer section uh, on, on your listing. And this can really help you set apart and help you get conversions. It's a tool. It's a company called uh, uh, Synthe Synthesia. And you can actually go in here and it's, it's an AI maker. And you basically remember earlier we were typing in text uh, to make those pictures. You can type in text what you want the person to say. And their lips will move to what what exactly to what those words are and you can do multiple languages too um and you can go in you can pick the, the avatar so you can pick a woman you can pick a man you can pick a young person you can choose a person of color whatever you want to do uh, you select the avatar so like here if i want this uh this uh woman uh, who's a little bit older um, i can uh, because my product maybe is a skin cream for women over 50 or something i can choose her um and then or i can choose someone like this just depends on what you want as avatar you type in what you want them to say, and then you generate the video. And it's it's very professional looking. It's very slick and very cool. And so you can answer questions this way. You could use it for in your marketing. You could use it to create videos really fast for your listing or the, the video shorts for your website. There's, there's so much cool stuff you could do. Those. There's the website link, synthesia.io, if you want to check that out. And this is a great tool to help you come up with brand names. You're trying to come up with a new name for a product or a new name for your business or whatever. It's, it's called namelix.com. And you can just type in something here and it will go out and it'll check all these cool names. It'll tell you if the website's available or not, if the .com is available. So it, it's it's really cool. For example, um, you can choose the style. You know, there's all kinds of brandable names, compound words, real words, made up words, short, medium, long. You get, there's, there's lots of flexibility here of what you're looking for. For example, I typed in the word dogs. I was trying to come up with a, a new 
brand name for a dog brand. So I just typed dogs. And this is what came back with all these. It came back with some like little graphics and some ideas for dog names. And some of the, some of them are a bunch of junk, but some of them are pretty cool. Uh, it, it's a really cool little site. So uh, check this out if you're trying to brainstorm some ideas. My wife actually just asked me earlier today, literally, uh, no joke. She's trying to come up with a name for a project. And I said, why don't you go to namelix.com? She's like, what's that? I never heard of it. I said, well, go to namelix.com and type in the subject. And she came up with some pretty cool ideas uh, for this little project she's doing. It, it's a really cool little tool to help you. This is an alternative to closing the listing when you run out of stock. I always see people, I'm running out of stock. What do I do? And you'll see on Facebook, you'll see a, a lot of morons uh, saying, raise your price. You're a moron if you raise your price when you're about to run out of stock. That's just, that's moronic. I, I just saw someone post that the other day and people were telling them, raise your price and slow it down. Don't do that. That messes with the algorithm. If you're going to go out of stock, you want to go out on top. It's like if you just won the Super Bowl, that's the time to retire. Uh, not to come back, uh, you know. If you're if you're over uh, over forty or something as a quarterback, you should retire when you go out go out on top. Don't go out on the bottom. If you raise your price, you're going to slow down your sales. And, and uh, the only reason you might want to raise your price ever is if you're just a few days from being in stock. You know, maybe you're selling twenty a day. You raise your price to sell fifteen a day because you know in like four days. You're going to be in stock. But if you're going to go totally out of stock, don't raise your price. You've heard people say close the listing. That helps preserve it. And closing the listing can help preserve it. But another way that I like to use is this one. If you go instead of closing listing, I put my pricing out of band. If you go into Seller Central there's um, and you go to, to view your inventory, up in the top right, there's a little button that's got preferences. And you can turn on the minimum and maximum price fields. And so what I do is I'll put uh, a minimum and maximum price in here, say say a uh, dollar ninety nine minimum and twelve I don't know twelve ninety nine maximum in this case, and then I'll raise the price from twelve ninety five to like ninety nine ninety five something crazy, and that will immediately it goes out of the price band it immediately suppresses the listing from and and but it holds your your rank you don't lose your rank, uh, and then once you come back in stock just go fix it. Make the minimum and maximum price within your pricing band. You know, make them uh, the maximum. Make if you're pricing it back to twelve ninety five, make sure your maximum price is is like above twelve ninety five, uh, and you'll be fine. And this can help you uh, maintain maintain some of your rank. You're going to lose a little bit anytime you go out of stock, but you can you can gain it back pretty quick with this little trick. All right, guys, we still have some more of Kevin's hacks coming up, and a couple more of mine. Um, but one of the things uh, we're talking about this week in our Bigger Better launch, and we talked about in the Elite webinar that we did, was something I've been super excited about, and it's going to give you tons of strategy um, that you've never, possibly never had before. And this has to do with kind of historical keyword research. Now, why would you need to do historical keyword research? Uh, one application of this is when you're doing se when you have a seasonal product. All right. So like, let's say I'm getting into a new niche or I'm launching a new product and it's, it's seasonal, not necessarily something extreme, like a Valentine's day product, but maybe it's just like, you know, something where, um, nine months out of the year, it sells really well, but in winter time, it doesn't sell well, you know, something like that. Well, like right now is, is November slash December, whenever you're listening to this and you know, maybe right now is the down season for this product I'm about to launch. And maybe that that's my whole strategy. Like I'm trying to launch it now in the down season. So it's, it's cheaper to launch, right? Well, if you're doing your regular keyword research, you know, like let's say using Cerebro and Mangit, remember the, what you're looking at is not necessarily the top products. Like who knows the, the, on some seasonal products, some sellers just let their product go out of stock, you know, during this. And they're not even trying to, they're not even trying to, uh, you know, keep it in stock. And so whatever is showing on page one of your main keywords, you know, the search volumes you see there, that is not indicative of what are the top sellers and what are the top keywords and what is the search volume, um, you know, during the peak months of whenever this product is. So, uh, you know, when, when I do products like this, um, I, I, you know, look at only brand analytics. I got to go to brand analytics and and I'll like, okay, let, let me, let me see 
during the peak, what I think is the peak month of sales for this product. Let me look who were the top three clicked and what were some of the main keywords that one of these products were were ranking for, right? Now, um, that's limited. You know, that's great information. It's one of the reasons why I love brand analytics, but but yeah, it, it's limited because I'm only can see the top three clicked. And we know there's a lot more activity than just, you know, who's it, the, one of the top three clicked. I want to know who else is on page one. I want to know, you know, who's doing sponsored ads, you know, like who's targeting these keywords. Uh, you know, who do I have to compete with if I'm running PPC during the peak months of this? And so that's always been kind of like this hole uh, of doing, you know, historical research. Um, other applications are, let's just say it's not a seasonal product, but you notice that uh, a certain seller you know, looking at their BSR history or looking at their x-ray history, like they were just crushing it in one month. Uh, maybe another top competitor or even your own product, you just like, you notice that it fell off a cliff. Sales completely fell off a cliff in a certain month or a certain, you know, week or something like that. Well, what I've always liked to do is I want to try and figure out what happened. Like if somebody had a sales spike, you know, it could have been sure a, a a out you know influencer marketing campaign or something like that you know right but a lot of times it, it happens to be because all of a sudden they were getting traction in sponsored ads or in organic rank for keywords that maybe they weren't ranked very highly for before and so what I always want to do is I want to try and reverse engineer their success you know because you know I figure they don't have visibility and they might not know what they did if they if if they did know what they did they would have kept it going and it wouldn't have been a temporary spike. Does that make sense? Like, you know, if all of a sudden uh, I jump to the top of a page for a keyword and I know what it is, well, I'm going to make sure I never fall off my ranking on that keyword. But if you see a spike and it completely falls off and it happens to be keyword based, that means that seller really does, didn't even realize what had happened or they weren't able to figure out which keyword was driving their sales. So the it, historical research in that sense is really good. And so what we're launching at Helium 10 in Cerebro um, in, in this month is this brand new tool. Um, I call it like time machine is what I call it, but it, it's gonna give you uh, the, the official name, I think in Helium 10 is historical trends. So when you enter a bunch of ASINs into Cerebro soon, if you're an elite member, what's gonna happen is you are going to see uh, a history of month by month, how many keywords total they were ranking for organic and sponsored, all right? And then what the real value is you're then going to be able to click on a certain month. Like let's say you saw, like I said, you know, their peak season was in September of 2021 or they had a peak sales that month and you wanna try and figure out what was working for them then. When you do that, when you click on this time frame, now you're gonna be able to see, um what keywords they were ranking for on average that exact month. Because remember, Cerebro is a recent 30 days history of where they've been ranking for organically and sponsored ads. So this is like super, super cool guy. I mean, this is, you know, the, the definition, in my opinion, of, of hashtag game changing, because, you know, you've never had these insights before where you can look back and, and kind of like, why I call it time machine is kind of like you're you're turning the clock back on a Cerebro view. So you're not just looking at these 30 days, but you're looking at an exact moment in time in the last year or two years to really reverse engineer the keyword strategy for your competitors or even to kind of like, you know, take a look back at your own product. Like maybe you knew your product was doing really well in a certain period of time and, you know, you didn't maybe you didn't save your Cerebro, you know, searches, you know, back then. Um, now you'll be able to go back and look at, all right, hey, th these keywords were probably driving my sales. I got to make sure uh, my rank on these, you know, increases if I want to duplicate this success. So this is something, something super cool, guys. It's only going to be for elite members, um, these, uh, this tool. So, so you elite members, it's coming in the next week or two for you. Make sure to hop in there and start doing this historical research. Now, for the rest of you guys, um, again, no, no, um, don't worry, guys. I have I have more hacks uh, coming up uh, in just a couple seconds here. But for the rest of you who are wondering, well, what does elite even mean? This 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 is kind of like what Kevin, you know, this whole presentation that Kevin is doing is kind of like what he does every month. He he has seven usually. He gives seven hacks uh, in a monthly training. 
um, that he does to elite members. This is the highest tier plan at Helium 10 where you get the widest access to our tools um, and you get this special training. So Kevin King does a monthly training with two or three experts and then he gives his seven hacks at the end of every single month. He has a monthly round table where you can ask him any question you want inside of a Zoom call. We have weekly Zoom calls with just other elite members. We have quarterly in-person workshops. Um, you know, we actually have one this week that, that we're doing it, depending on when you're listening to this on November 16th, um, tons and tons of benefits So you, you can talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, like you can actually book me and, and other evangelists one-on-one -on -one for consultations, uh, tons and tons of benefits for being an elite member, including exclusive access to tools like this time machine tool I've been talking about. So, um, 95% of the year, uh, our elite is closed. We, we want this to be exclusive. We don't want this just to be another plan where just anybody can sign up. So right now, I believe it's open. You know, um, it, I, I tried to keep it open until November the 17th. I want to say November the 18th. So if it's before November 18th and you're listening to this, you can actually sign up. It's the last chance to get it in at the, um, the uh, current rate. Um, it's just if you're already on a diamond plan, it's only $140 more a month. So just go to h10.me forward slash elite h10.me forward slash elite to sign up i mean just the one-on-one -on -one calls itself might be worth it for you let alone all this you know, this special tool let alone all the networking that we have and and all the you know unique discounts and tens of thousands of dollars of discounts from partner companies but maybe just the one-on-ones is enough to make it worthwhile for you but i highly recommend trying it out for a couple of months this is one of the last times to get in um, at this rate or the last time to get in at this rate, h10.me forward slash elite. If you are watch, listening to this after November the uh, 17th, you're not going to be able to go there. Go ahead and go to that website. But what you're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to just get added to the waiting list to see when we're going to um, open up membership again. Uh, so just do, go ahead and do that. But but if you just happen to be listening to this before the 17th, make sure to get in there, guys. You won't um, you won't regret it. Um, let's go ahead and get back into uh, Kevin's hacks. Actually, some of these hacks came from elite webinars that he's done. But let's go ahead and get a, a few more of these hacks in. If you can't get your videos to appear in the order that you want on your listing, maybe you got like seven videos that you've uploaded. You're like, Dad, I want the fourth one's the one I want to appear on my listing in, in the picture spot number seven. I don't want it going down into the video shorts. How do I move them around? Amazon doesn't let you move them around. All you got to do is go into your managed videos, just delete them all, just delete them all, and then re-upload them in the order that you want. And the problem solved. And that's a real easy solution. If you want to get import data on your competition for free, this is a great way to get import data on your competition for free. You don't have to, there's paid services that do this, like Pangeva. There, there's several of them out there that some of the big sellers use, but this is totally for free. It's called importyeti.com. If you go to importyeti.com, you can type in any supplier's name, factory names, all kinds of stuff. Everything in the, that comes into the U.S. is public information. So if you bring stuff in by sea and some things by air, but mostly by sea, it's all public information. So you can find out what anybody is bringing in. You want to know what your competition is bringing in how, and what their factory is. You can find out by looking at their bill of lading. The bill of lading for every shipment coming to the United States is a public record. And this company and the ones that have paid services get that information from the government and they put it into a searchable form. So like if, say this is one of my competitors, he's selling these dog bowls here, Peggy 11's uh, stainless steel dog bowls. And I want to know who's, what's the factory that's making this and how many, how many of these are they really bringing in uh, and, and selling? I can come here and look at their names. So it's where it says sold by where the arrow is sold by Lake Wu. Click on that on Amazon. That takes me to their, 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 their page with their information and see where it says business name, that uh, that that Chinese name there, Yao Futong Electric Appliance Factory. That's the name of the company. That's probably the name that they're importing under, most likely. Some people are smart and they use a different name, and, but that's probably, so I just copy that and I go over to uh, Import Yeti and, and paste that in and look at this. It tells me the total shipments from October, when I did this, October 20, uh, of 21 to March of 22. They had three shipments come in, tells me all their shipments, how much they weighed. I can click on them and get all the information. I can see what factory that came from, when they shipped them in, get all kinds of cool information this way. You can find factories this way. You can find information on your competitors. You, it, it's pretty cool information, totally for free. 
called Import Yeti. If you want to find YouTube videos, they're linked into Amazon with affiliate links so that you can reach out to these people and say, hey, what about my product? Maybe if you feature my product, you can make some money too. And uh, I'll even double what you're paying from Amazon. You send me your, your affiliate report every month and I'll give you an, I'll double it uh, for anything that's sold of our products. You can find that stuff. If you just go into Google and type in YouTube AMZ.2 and then whatever the phrase is. So for example, I go into YouTube, type YouTube AMZ.2 dog eats fast. That's, that's the problem phrase because I'm selling a slow feed dog bowl. So dog eats fast. That's the problem phrase. And it'll pop up with all the videos that have an Amazon affiliate link that are talking about uh, this problem. And I can reach out to each of these people, you know, if they have the contact information on their page and a lot of them do and say, Hey, uh, what about uh, my slow feed dog bowl? Let's, let's talk some business and uh, I'll send you some. Why don't you promote it, create videos for me and link to Amazon and I'll double your, your commissions. If you send me a, a screenshot of your report every month, it can be very, very effective at driving traffic. Um, a lot of times you can find their contact information. If you you look at their description and expand it out, a lot of times they'll be there. And you can also see here, there's all these am affiliate links that they've got in, in, in there. Easy way to uh, get people that are already doing this to uh, try to get them to promote your product. All right. What's been your favorite hack so far, guys? We, we got plenty more uh, coming to you. Um, let me go ahead and give you one of mine. This is not necessarily a hack, but just a, a strategy I've been talking uh, about more. Now, I'm going to show you guys uh, who are watching this on YouTube uh, on the screen. I'm on a you know a collagen peptides listing. Uh, and so here's the buyer's experience. Um, you know, when they go to this page, they're, they're looking here. And if, if I'm just going to read the first couple of bullet points, maybe I'm checking this out here. But Notice, you know, there's tons of sponsored display ads, you know, on here. You know, there's no getting around that. But when I scroll down here, uh, I'm still reading the bullet points. Maybe I can see all of the bullet points right now. I'm, I'm in this, you know, this, this, this screen here. I can see all of the bullet points, but already I'm seeing all these frequently bought together, you know, products. And, and these just happen to be frequently bought together with the actual same brand. But usually these might be from other sellers and other brands. And then immediately below that. I'm seeing customer frequently viewed. Uh, these are sponsored placements right here and tons of uh, you know products that are not my brand here. So the, the consumer is just flooded with all these other products and chances to buy other products um, that are not my brand, right? And let's say I even you know try and dominate these these uh, sponsored product ad placements by by targeting my own listing, you know, so that I come up. If somebody actually hits one of these and it is my brand, I'm going to get hit with a, you know, paper a pay per click fee, right? If I actually convert. So what I like to do is I like to fill this whole section up with virtual bundles, all right? So like take a look at this other collagen peptides product. We're going to do the same thing and start scrolling down, you know, maybe somebody's reading these uh bullet points here, right? And I'm still reading the bullet points, but do you notice here now on the screen where uh, the other collagen peptides listing, if I'm still reading the bullet points, I have like 10 other products that I'm already looking at because of sponsored ads or frequently bought together. But in that same view on this other collagen peptides listing, since they have virtual bundles set up, it takes up the whole bottom of this page right now. So all I see or the only chances that somebody has right now in this view to get another product that's not my brand is these sponsored display uh, ads that are coming up because look at this big uh, you know, section that Amazon puts for these virtual bundles and it, it's just advertising their own products. They would have to scroll all the way down another full page just to be able to see those sponsored ads that is coming up on the other one. So guys, set up your virtual bundles if you have more than, than than two or three products in a brand it it's free to set those up and and the goal yeah sure you might be getting sales you know for those you know one out of every 200 orders you know might be the virtual bundle but the goal is not to get sales the goal is mainly to take up real estate to push frequently bought together and to push the sponsored product ads down the page to give people less chance to go off of your listing and it, it it's allows you to highlight your own products there in this little carousel. And, and here's the thing. Let's say somebody does click on it and does purchase it. Unlike when you're doing defensive product targeting ads, which you still should do, you know, unlike there where you get charged for the click and charge, uh, you know, if somebody buys it, you're not getting charged anything. There's no 
pay per click if somebody hits the virtual bundle. You know, whether they buy something or not, you are not paying a cent for that. So guys, really cool free tip. Make sure to set up your virtual bundles. Um, let's go ahead and get back into the hacks. If you want to increase your TikTok video views by 30%. You run maybe if some of you're not doing TikTok now, you need to be considering getting on TikTok. It's dominating everything, product sales, um, Facebook, and uh, is and YouTube and Google are all trying to mimic what what TikTok is doing. Uh, but this little easy trick can get your video views up by as much as thirty percent. Make sure you include trending music in, in whatever you're doing on TikTok. You want to find that? Just go to uh, TikTok ads which is you can go to ads.tiktok and there's a link there. Select the song, the song's thumbnail, cho choose the time range, like, you know, the last two weeks or whatever. And you can, uh, and you can then see exactly what songs are trending, what songs are hot on Amazon. And by using those songs in your videos, you'll automatically tell the algorithm to show it to a lot more people. Uh, it can be a really, really good trick to actually get your views on TikTok considerably. This is how to get the best selling new release badge even if your listing is several years old. So even if your listing is several years old, you can still get a, num uh, a number one new release badge by doing this. What you need to do is change the offer date on your product to one day before the current date. So whatever the offer date field is, it's in Seller Central, change it to one day before whatever today is. So that changes to November 2nd. And then the next day, so tomorrow, I need to be the best seller on that listing. So I'm going to have to drive some traffic. Maybe I got a lightning deal going on uh, uh, tomorrow, or maybe I, I can send to something to my, my, my email list that I have and say, go we're running a special on the product, you know, use this coupon code, whatever you, you're going to need to drive some traffic. If you can be the top seller for that one day only, it'll almost always get you the, the best um, new release badge. Look at this product here. This is, Dog poop bags have been around a long time, 10,700 reviews, and they have a number one new release badge. They're doing this trick uh, to get that badge. Um, it'll work almost most of the time uh, if, if you want to get that badge. All right. Uh, another one of my uh, strategies for you guys, I talked about this before, but in, a, in some listings, there's now, uh, or it's been for about, you know, I want to say about six months now. You guys have noticed that there's like secondary descriptions that come up where you can actually add more description, like you can add more uh, bullet points. Now, it still does not show up on the main page. All right. So like I've been tracking this for a while. Now, who knows? Whenever you're listening to this, maybe it does. It still doesn't show up. However, one thing I've noticed is I've tried putting some keywords in here. Like here's the coffin shelf listing that we're looking at right now. And um, I actually have A plus content instead of the uh, instead of a description but i have description in the back end and i added this other description line and there's like about eight words in here that um eight to ten words that i did not have anywhere else in my listing all right like like moon shelf and letterboard these were not anywhere else in my listing and then after a while after having this in my secondary um uh, my secondary description two out of these words indexed all right. It wasn't across the board. I tried it on a couple other listings and it was about there, like between, you know, 15 to 25 percent of the, the somewhat relevant keywords to a product. It wasn't anywhere else in the listing. Putting it in my my description actually got me indexed about 20 percent of the time. So, you know, that's not a great success rate. You know, we have I'm going to be talking about in episode 400, some like super indexable fields. But still, some of you Amazon sellers are always desperate for as much keyword real estate for getting indexed and uh, if you have especially if you have a plus content where meaning you can probably stuff you know some of you guys choose to just go ahead and stuff your description since it doesn't show any more keyword stuff well this could be a potential place where you could throw some keywords and hopefully it'll get indexed now um if you don't have a plus content it'll be interesting to see what when this description actually becomes active where you can actually have secondary and and tertiary descriptions coming up is it going to show in different paragraphs who knows but um at least for now uh some of it is actually getting indexed so there's a strategy to be looking out for why don't you guys try add a secondary description put some relevant keywords that you're that are nowhere else in your listing and let me know you know after a week uh do you get indexed uh, for them or not use index checker to make sure to check it out all right let's go ahead and get into some of kevin's last hacks the next one 
be sure to check your product type values because the wrong one could be costing you sales. So what you want to do to do this, this is super important. Everybody needs to do this as a checkup before the holidays, or you might be leaving tens of thousands of dollars on the table and maybe hundreds of thousands if you're a big seller. You want to ask the normal seller support, just open up a ticket and say, please open my category listing report. And this is a report that will show up in all your reports. It doesn't show up by, by default. You have to actually ask them to turn it on. They'll turn it on. It's usually for about a week or so. It, it stays in there and then it disappears again. It's because this is a blueprint of your listing. The category listing report is basically your, your entire blueprint. And for security reasons, they don't, they don't put this out there. But if you open it, uh, ask them to open it, they'll open it for you. And then what you want to do is go into that report and there's a field called product, uh, I'm sorry, feed product type. And here's the, the kicker. If the value in that field is in lowercase letters, you need to update it. That's an old system. And Amazon migrated the system and they did some updates about two years, a year, two years ago. And if, if you've got products that have been around for a while, even some new products have gotten classified wrong, they actually are in lowercase. You need to consider updating them because you may be missing out on a lot of stuff. So what you want to do is ask brand registry support to check your ASIN to confirm it has the relevant fields. It should all be uppercase. It should all be uppercase. If it's not all uppercase in this category listing report, you may be missing a lot of uh, a lot of sales. Now, this is not going to change um, where your your what category you're in or something like that, but it's going to change the way your index and what keywords are assigned to your listing. Uh, so make sure you do this, especially if you've been selling for a while. This this is critical. Uh, this is like super critical. This could be worth the entire. For those of you that are on here that have been selling for a while, this could be worth the entire webinar right here this holiday season. So check that out. This is another, remember earlier I told you how to get some discounts with UPS. Uh, and yes, you can use that with FBM. Someone posted in here and asking if they could use that with their FBM. But here's another way. Maybe you don't like UPS we, uh, for whatever reason. You like FedEx. Um, here's another cool thing that you can use FedEx, discounted FedEx shipping on any channel. Your own Shopify, your FBM orders, shipping into Amazon or your Walmart, whatever you want to do. If you have a Walmart seller account, you'll need that to sign up. But once you sign up, you can use this anywhere. You don't have to just use it on Walmart. You can get what's called FedEx Advantage. It's it's a special thing for Walmart sellers. So if you have even if you're not selling on Walmart, you just have the basic account, you can get into the FedEx Advantage and it can save you a tremendous amount of money. Um, like here's some examples here, like um on the rates. It's just it's crazy amounts of money that can make a huge, huge difference uh, for you in a lot of cases. All right, guys, what did you think? I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know, Kevin is a wealth of information. Um, what was your favorite hack? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I'll, I'd be uh, curious to know not only which was your favorite, but which one have you implemented, hopefully, since you listened to this episode. That, that's the key, guys. You can't just be listening to these hacks. You actually have to implement them. Um, you know, in your business to, to help it grow. So remember, you know, Kevin gives these every month with the elite program. If you guys are interested to find out more about the elite program, just go to h10.me forward slash elite. And, uh, you know, if you, if you hop in, go right in and book one of those one-on-one -on -one calls with me and let me know that you heard about the elite program from the podcast. Um, and we'll definitely try and give you a shout out, but thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. I hope you enjoyed these strategies. We'll see you in the next one.